Hello there, you're watching Press TV News. My name is Mehrdad Yastani. Iran has delivered its response to a letter of proposals by the five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany over its nuclear case. An informed Iranian source said Iran's response to the letter was signed by Foreign Minister Minister Mataki and delivered by Iran's ambassador to Brussels to EU Foreign Policy Chief Javier Solana and Foreign Ministers of six countries. Solana's spokesman, Christina Gallic, has also confirmed the announcement. Gallic said recent talks between Solana and Iran's top nuclear negotiator, Saeed Jalili, were positive and constructive. Earlier on Friday, Jalili told Solana in a phone conversation that Iran has prepared a response with a constructive and creative view and focus on common grounds. Solana and Jalili agreed during the conversation to hold further talks in coming weeks. Last month, Solana gave Iran a letter from the six foreign ministers and a package of incentives to encourage Tehran to suspend its uranium enrichment activities. Palestinian resistance movement Hamas says it has suspended negotiations on a prisoner swap deal with Israel. The group's spokesman says that's because Tel Aviv is not respecting the terms of a truce in the Gaza Strip. Hamas has decided to suspend the negotiation over the file of Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit because Israel is not committed to the truce deal. The Israeli occupation keeps the commercial crossings closed, alleging that Palestinian homemade rockets have been fired from Gaza. We use this card to put pressure on Israel to abide by the truce deal. But we assure that we are fully committed to the truce and we want all parties, especially Egypt, to put pressure on the Israelis to respect the deal. Hamas said it could not therefore trust Israel to respect a possible agreement on a prisoner exchange. Hamas said negotiations would be resumed only once Israel shows it is serious and respects the terms of the truce. The group's negotiator Shalit for Shalit's release, Os Osama al muzeni also said a delegation from Hamas has cancelled a visit to Cairo to discuss the Israeli soldiers' release. He said the decision has been made in protest at Israel's violation of the ceasefire. The freed Franco-Colombian hostage Ingrid Betancourt has made a triumphant return to France after being freed earlier this week from almost six and a half years as hostage of left-wing Colombian rebels. Peter Humey reports from Paris. The French government jet touched down at a military base just a few minutes behind schedule. Waiting on the tarmac, President Nicolas Sarkozy, accompanied by his wife Carla Bruni, and several hundred journalists. Ever since she was released from the Colombian jungles last Wednesday, everywhere that Ingrid Betancourt has gone has become a huge media event. The former hostage descended the steps from the plane unaided and was warmly greeted by President Sarkozy. Her plight as a prisoner of the left-wing FARC guerrillas in the jungles of Colombia had gained her huge sympathy in France. Since her liberation by Colombian armed forces this week, she has begun to talk about her six-and-a-half-year ordeal in the many media interviews she has given, and also her joy at being reunited with family and close friends, and how it was to be back in France, her adopted home. I've been dreaming of this moment for seven years. Thank heaven, God, and then all of you. President Sarkozy had made her freedom a priority and expressed his and the country's relief. Her nightmare was finally over. I want to tell you that all of France is delighted that you're here and all of France is struck by your manner, your smile, your strength and dignity. As Ingrid Betancourt thanked the French government and friends and supporters in France, emotion overcame her. Betancourt will spend the next few days in Paris, where she will undergo medical checks, and next week is expected to visit with the Pope at the Vatican. Peter Humey for Press TV, Paris. Georgia's breakaway region of South Ossetia has threatened to use force against Georgian forces. The threat came after two people were killed and at least 10 more injured in exchanges of fire in several towns of the province overnight. I want to repeat once again that if Georgia continues to act in the same way, by storing and placing a lot of weapons in the area, they will encounter an adequate response. We would like to warn them about that. A separatist leader also said such actions show Georgia does not want to resolve the conflicts in South Ossetia and Abkhazia peacefully. Russian Foreign Ministry also said Tbilisi's shooting in South Ossetia was an act of open aggression, 
Abkhazia and South Ossetia provinces broke away from Georgia's central role during wars against Tbilisi in the 1990s. Georgia, which has promised to bring the, the regions back into the fold, accuses Russia of aiming to absorb them.